What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Forever Stranded Lost Souls. Oh, yeah, guys. So I've been doing a little bit of stuff off camera here. One of the things that I did is I went and I collected a lot of diamonds. I went down to our branch mine, mm -hmm, and I decided to make one of those little landing areas for each of our different levels in case we need to mine specific ores. So I spent some time here, like, redoing the staircase. I don't really know how important this is going to be. But I felt like I should just do that. So we have a spot here. You can see on, on the mini map it says Y50. So we have a, a little spot here where we can go to our Y50 area. We have a spot here where we can go to our Y40 and 30 and 20. And finally down here at Y11. We do 11 because lava spawns at Y10. And we don't want to mine and have lava like right at our foot level. We want it, I guess, at that block level and below. So anyway, uh, I've been doing some mining here. Yep, uh, continuing out of branch mine. Previously, we just dug a tunnel all the way down this way, which I had to fill in a lot <laughs> going back towards the stairs because of the way that we pushed out our staircase a little bit. But anyway, um, yeah, we had this mined out, and I mined down this way, and then I just got done mining down this way down here. There's a lot of caves and a lot of monsters and stuff. We'll probably have to end up making ourselves some more of those torches, the magnum torches or mega torches, whatever they are called. And putting them down there so when I go down in mine, I don't have to worry about all the caves and stuff and the monsters coming out and all of that. But yeah, we did a bunch of mining here so I could collect diamonds. Now last episode, we were looking at trying to finish off the X Nihilo section. Which which section? Yeah, the compressed section here. And we needed a lot of diamonds to make these compressed hammers. One of these requires 18 diamonds, right? And then I saw that there was the next one over, this guy down here, the ultimate compressed hammer. This thing is going to require us to have 72 diamonds. Well, the diamond ingots, right? So I went and I mined a whole lot of stuff down there. We used Fortune 3, we collected some diamonds, and then I've been taking those, turning those into diamond nuggets and melting them in here. I, I hope I have enough here. I think that's enough. That looks like 72 to me. Um... So yeah, we ended up with like five diamonds left over. So if we're going to need diamonds for anything else, I'm definitely going to have to go mining again for that. And we had three diamond ore in this chest as well that I fortune threed. Yeah. Anyway, that's all of our stuff combined. So we need to make uh, nine. Hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah, we need to make nine diamond hammers in order to make the first stage of this quest. So let's get this done. Actually, let's do it this way that like that add one more and then we'll add some of those here all right so there is nine of those and then we need to turn those into this guy like so a compressed hammer there it is quest complete diamond compressed hammer nice okay so we got one quest complete that gives us two loot chests we'll claim those and let's pop those real quick and see what we get so we get six signalum ingots and then we get a wireless rf transmitter and an eerie mask from Batania. That is advancement made inner arts. That is, uh, that's pretty eerie. I have to say, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to wear that. I don't, don't really care about it. This doesn't seem to do anything. It just says cosmetic on it. Yep. We'll just go ahead and throw this over here in our new storage system that we put things that we care about in. Uh, all right. So let's make a few more of those. So yeah, we need to make three more. Oh, I'm going to need more sticks than this. I think I do have some though in this thing. Yeah, we'll grab some. And they're on the ground. <laughs> and now they're going to go back into this because this automatically collects them. Okay, so let's try this again. We'll do this and that. And then we'll do this and this. All right, so now we should have too many to hold in our inventory. So we'll throw those on the ground and make more. Perfect. All right, so now we should be able to make... Three more of these hammers. There's that. This one. Cool. All right. So, and then four of those together make the double compressed hammer. Uh, this says it's a Tinker's Construct modifier combined with blasting for best results. Okay. Well, there it is. Ultimate compressed hammer quest complete. Okay. Well, let's go claim this one. That's going to give us either three chance icosahedrons or three loot chests. And of course, we're doing the loot chests like we do. So we get four chests, all right? We get ourselves eight Anori crystals. I think we needed that for something that I was looking at recently. And 120 wooden 
torch arrows. Yeah, we're probably never going to use those. Speaking about torches, I'm just going to go ahead and add these to our collection over here. Speaking about torches, it was brought to my attention that the regular vanilla torches that we've been using aren't very good. We placed on a vanilla regular torch, it turns into a primal core torch. The primal core torches sets us on fire, and when you break them, you can't just set them back down again. You have to relight them so they take up multiple inventory slots and they're super annoying. Ah, it was brought to my attention that there is Tinker's Construct Stone torches in this mod pack. For some reason, I never even stopped to consider to even look for those. Yeah, so these you can make four at a time with a stone tool rod and one piece of coal, whereas the vanilla torches you only make one at a time, and then they turn into the garbage primal core ones, right? So I went through the base, and I went ahead and I removed all of our original torches, and I replaced them all with these cobblestone ones. Also in this room, I decided I didn't really care too much for those stairs that we had here, so I went ahead and I removed those stairs. Yep, so now we just have like a an open walkway. I did add in an elevator block here so we can go up and down, right? So this is kind of cool. We have a nice open area. And I think that allows these things to have more air blocks in front of them, which should allow them to make more power. I'm not sure if that's exactly how that works, but I was pretty sure that I read something about that. Our little guy over here, yep, he's still trucking along. Looks like he's making plenty of diamonds. Okay, so we don't have to... Uh, worry about diamonds as much as I thought we did. But yeah, I also took the time and I ran some of the leadstone flux ducts underneath the floor here. I con connected these guys together. And then this one over here I have running along the wall and then down underneath the walkway and it connects over there as well. And then the wiring for these guys, which we kind of like dug the wall out and had it all ugly. Yeah, I cleaned that up. That is connected to where all three of these windmills connect together. So yeah, we have all of our power kind of consolidated in this area. So that's another thing that we've done here, which is nice. Uh, I moved our latex machine, our, flu our tree fluid extractor over here, and I put uh, six buckets of latex in this guy. Uh, it does not automatically push the latex out, so we do need to get like a fluid thing and a servo and extract in there. So we'll be looking at that. Uh, what else did I do here? I also made a new set of our Tinker's stuff. Yeah, I uh, made all of these things once again. We brought the tool forge from the nether, but yeah, I remade all of these guys. We were running low on our sharpening kit so I could repair my tools on the fly with all the mining we've been doing. Yeah, so I decided it was time to do that. I made a whole bunch of the, uh, the patterns once again. And also, let's see, <laughs> I've been doing a lot of things off camera, haven't I? Let's see, I uh, set this up so we have a chest of coal that's being pushed into our coke oven. We are extracting out the creosote over here automatically, and we are also extracting out the coal coke here, the resulting item, into this chest. Yep, so we got that automated. Uh, I have been melting down a lot of iron that we've been collecting, turning those into blocks, and we even got like, I think 10 or more blocks over here, 19 blocks. Yeah, so just been keeping myself busy around here, trying to trying to get a lot of this off-camera stuff, the, the more boring, grindy just building well i guess digging stuff done uh all right so now that we got this quest done we need to do the auto compressed hammer and the auto heavy sieve now i think we were looking at this before auto compressed hammer i think i need to make another one of these yeah okay so we are in fact going to need 18 more diamonds which is fine we can now do that we have plenty of diamonds over here at our sieve. Another thing I need to do is get like a better storage system set up over here so we can automatically extract out of this and put into it, which might be a case where we look at doing compacting drawers and a drawer controller. That might be something that we work on. I know I was talking about, I think last episode, that we need to get a better storage system set up. Yeah, that might be a thing that we're gonna wanna do here very, very soon. All right, so I will take these diamond nuggets and throw that over into our stoked crucible. I have this thing all turned off. It seems like whenever this room is turned on, it really drops the FPS, unfortunately. Uh, so I try and keep it off as much as possible. But yeah, we can turn the fire back on, and then we can turn this back on, which is going to make a lot of noise, and start lowering our FPS a bit. <laughs> but yeah, that's what we got to do to make ourselves our 
diamond ingots so i'll let this thing cook down we'll get our 18 ingots i'll make another one of the compressed hammers and then we'll look at making this guy there we go so now we got this a little bit better automated so this thing here is now running out of power i guess it is still drawing more than what we're making even though it says we're only using 45 fe which again is the same thing as rf that's forge energy is what that stands for uh yeah it's still drawing more power than what we're making which is kind of surprising to me we don't really have a way to see how much power we're generating but i would imagine that it's more than uh 45 <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, maybe this thing's misreporting how much power it's using. But yeah, I went ahead and I put a transfer node on here. So every time we sift something, it goes into this and it gets put over into a drawer controller, which really is not that expensive in this mod pack. It is the standard recipe, I do believe, does require 13 building. And then I was going to use compacting drawers for all of these things. So I made a bunch of them. Unfortunately, the compacting drawers do not work with these ores with the recipe changes. Well, I guess the uh, ore pieces. Yeah, since it is a changed recipe where nine of those are required to make the, the ore chunk or whatever, and you can't uncraft it, yeah, it's only a one-way craft, so the compacting drawers do not work. Oh, well. Uh, they do work with the diamonds, and they do work with our emeralds here, so we have those happily going into there. And if we ever do upgrade this thing and use more stuff like uh, sift different items or whatever, we will have to expand this out, which will make the drawer controller nice. We just have to add in the chests or compacting drawers or whatever else. And that will just go ahead and feed those inventories. So yeah, pretty happy about that. Uh, so I went and got all of this stuff done over here. We should be ready to go to make these things yeah there's 18 of these guys let's grab some sticks and we'll once again make one of those double comp or i guess the compressed hammer not the double compressed one all right so there's that guy and this guy there's nine of those and once again whoops once again we'll w click those all up into here like so and make a compressed diamond hammer nice Okay, so now with that, we should be able to make our auto-compressed hammer, which does require steel. Mm-hmm. And some pressure plates. Do we have steel? We do. We have six ingots here, and then we need four iron for the pressure plate situation. And there it is. So we should be very much good to go here for an auto-compressed hammer. Great. Let's set this guy down. Let's take a look at it real quick. Right, okay. So we can't put this in here. That does not work. Uh, we can put in the compressed hammers, though. I think iron or stone, if there's a stone version, the iron ones definitely should go in here, or the diamond ones. Once we get to the point where we're making a whole lot of diamonds, it'll make sense to put those in here, which will speed this thing up. And I don't think it uses extra power, but this thing does say it uses 130, and the other one says it's using 45, and we're not keeping up with the 45, so I doubt we'll be able to keep up with this one. So we will save this for later if we do, in fact, use those. We might get to the point where we just get quarries and uh, before we even get these things going. So who knows? Who knows? Um, it says, sick of breaking all those blocks. This will use your hammer. This will use your hammer you craft. Just place them in the block. Okay. Uh, let's claim this. That sentence was weird. <laughs> it took me a second. I was like, what is, what is that saying? Rib bone and bone. All right. We'll just go and throw those guys up in there. Great. So I was looking at this double compressed hammer thing. It said it was the Tinker's modifier. Uh, I don't have any modifiers available on our hammer. I just put another thing of uh, redstone on there. So we have the haste est er trait. I think I could put one more thing of redstone on there. And then we're done with the redstone. This thing goes pretty quickly now. It's at a 10.26. But anyway, uh, I was looking at this one. We had to use something that has a modifier. If we put that on there, we can see if we scroll down here, that gives it smashing two, and that's an X compressum modifier. Apparently there is no, I guess, uh, tool tip or whatever. Anyway, uh, so smashing two, I'm not sure what smashing versus smashing two does, but I imagine if we put that on there, if we break stone, we get gravel. If we break gravel, we get sand, etc. So this, that would be really good for getting ourselves an unbreakable tool, right? Unbreakable tool, probably another pickaxe or something. Put that on there and then we're good to go. We don't have to worry about that ever again. We'll just have to have something, you know, that places all the blocks for us and then we can vein mine it. But yeah, that sounds like something that'd be pretty awesome. 
Okay, anyway, let's move on. So we have that one done, and now we need to do auto heavy sieve. Let's take a look at this one. Auto heavy sieve. This guy does require our heavy sieve. Oh, that requires a lot more steel, doesn't it? Okay, so we're going to need 18, 19, 20 steel. Oh boy, I think we had two, right? Yeah, that's definitely, definitely not enough. Actually, let's do a few more blocks of iron here. We'll go ahead and throw that over here into our our blast furnace, our crude blast furnace. We'll put some of the coal coke in there. We'll let that cook down. That's going to take a minute for that to happen. In the meantime, we're going to take a look at our iron situation <laughs> and get this thing going. But we're going to have to wait on that. And that is the last quest of our X Nihilo compress section. So Better With Mods is done. X Nihilo is about to be done once we get the steel survival is done. We're making progress here, guys. Tinkering would be the next one that we need to start working on. Mm -hmm. So we could look at making like the seared furnace, the tinker's tank. Um, the smart casting thing. This is definitely something I'd like to do. This really makes what we're doing over here, pouring iron, go so much faster. But it does require upgrades in order to make it into a casting basin. So anyway, let's take a look at this thing. Maybe this is the first one we want to do now. So smart output. This guy. That does require ice. Now I've seen ice around. Pretty sure I've seen ice around on the surface. Let's go to our map here. We will click the day button, which should show us stuff. Yeah, so over here, we have a snowy biome, and I do think over here in the river in that snowy biome, we do in fact have ice. So we will need a way to collect that. I think you have to do that with silk touch, right? I don't believe we have silk touch yet. So that might be something that we're going to have to do. Okay, yeah, that's going to be quite the trip, isn't it? Uh, you can see a lot of these... AE2 meteors on the ground too. Where is our base? We're right here. Okay, so we're right here. We need to go all the way over this way. And that is like 1700 by negative 200. And we are 200 by 100. So yeah, that's quite the distance away. That's like 1500 blocks or so. All right, so we'll have to prepare for that. Uh, and then also just regular plain old seared stone, which I think we can do easily in the smeltery. So we need to figure out how to get silk touch. And I think silk touch, yeah, silky touch right here. This is one of our our things that we can get. We definitely want to look at this. So a silky jewel. This guy requires emeralds, that which is easy, and then silky cloth. So string around gold ingots. We need four of those. So that is easy enough for us to do. So there's some string. There's some gold. We'll go ahead and craft these guys up. All right, there's four of those, and then we need an emerald, which I think we should have one here. Yes, we do. Very good. And there we go. So there's a silky jewel. So we could put that on here. Actually, no, we can't because that already has fortune. So we just need to make ourselves some kind of a throwaway tool. Well, maybe not throwaway, but something just cheap and easy for us to make right now. Uh, and then we can look at swapping out those parts later, making it better at a later time. But for right now, cobblestone should be just fine to make the entire tool out of. So we'll do a stone pickaxe head. Actually, I want to make the handle. Let's make the handle out of wood. That'll just make it a little bit better. And maybe the binding out of wood too. All right, so we'll do it that way. Okay, and then we're also, whoops, I don't want to take that out. Uh, we're also going to want to make probably some of these things. Okay, so there is a way for us to repair it out of the base. All right, so we will do a pickaxe, this, this, and one of these guys. And there is a... Very bad <laughs> stone pickaxe. This should have one modifier. All right, very good. We'll place this here and that there. And now it is a silk touch terrible pick. <laughs> okay, I think silk touch even lowers the mining speed. Yeah, we have mining speed of one. Not very good. Anyway, we have a way to silk touch things now. So I think the next step is I am going to drop off stuff in my inventory here. We are going to go hop over <laughs> to where that uh icy biome is the snowy biome yeah we'll go ahead and do that we'll go and get some ice and then we'll be right back all right guys so i just got done melting down some of our seared brick that we had eight of them turning into seared stone because that's required i guess we could have just chiseled it i think that's another viable method 
And then I just got back from traveling over to our ice biome, <laughs> and yeah, this is the amount of ice that I was able to mine with our pickaxe before it broke, and I decided that was probably enough that we don't need to really worry about repairing this thing. In fact, where did I put those things in the pouch? Yeah, there they are. All right, so we'll just do that, that, and there we go. Now it's fully ready to go. In fact, we will keep that in the pouch too for later. Okay, very good. So now that we have our seared stone and we have some ice, we should be able to make ourselves the thing. Oh, I also made this sleeping mat. This is from Cyclic. Yeah, it's, so you need a red wool plus a leather. So yeah, pretty easy for us to get. I, obviously, this thing has a durability. I didn't realize that when I made it. But yeah, we can only use it 100 times. But every time you sleep, you increase the difficulty significantly. So we're probably 10 more difficulty than it was before the last clip. Yeah, anyway, I had to sleep halfway over there. Otherwise, I'd have to just like dig a hole and wait 10 minutes and not really the most interesting thing for me to do. So I figured sleeping, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we want to make ourselves the item here. What was it called? It, well, oh, we never claimed this. Let's claim that. That was called the Smart Output. It's from Tinker.io, I think. Smart Output. This thing, yeah. So we want to make two of these, one for casting basin and one for our other such casting all right so smart casting is ready to go let's go and claim this okay and then we can also pop these loot chests so that's gonna give us some bread slices and some runic dust hmm. both of which are kind of meh not really that great now the way this smart casting thing works it almost looks like a block that would replace your drain but it doesn't work that way what it does is it replaces your casting table or your casting basin. So you pour fluid into it, either through a pipe or through the faucet, however you want to do it. And then this replaces these guys. And when I used this previously, it was like an instant cooldown. Like you didn't have to wait for the iron blocks to like harden over time. It was like instantly ready to go. Uh, and then these things also do require some upgrades. So let's remove this guy. We'll replace that with this and we'll check this out. So yeah, you can see the UI here by default is a casting table. You have to put an upgrade in the slot over here, turn it into a casting basin. It looks like you can also put in an upgrade to make your redstone compatible. This tells you the internal fluid volume. And then if you have something in here you don't want, you can, I think shift click. Yeah, it says right there, hold shift to unlock this button. Shift click this to empty the tank. Okay, so max one means that it'll harden one ingot and then you need to remove that ingot before you can harden another one. You can put upgrades in here to upgrade that to five, I think. Let's take a look at this. So we do at I slash O. We can see all the different various upgrades for this thing. So slot upgrade, one, two, three, four. Uh, we have fortune upgrade. I'm not actually sure what that does. Increase 30% of triplication rate for ore crusher. Apparently this thing has an ore crusher thing now. I'm not... Or, oh, it's a separate machine. Aha, uh -huh. so you need manual and hammer heads. Interesting. I have not seen this before, so I don't know how that thing works. Sterling engine as well. I wonder if that's just a crafting component. What is that used for? Hmm, I don't know. Uh, also, solid fuel. When I've used this mod previously, if we put in... Yeah, the fuel input machine, you can put that as one of these blocks here, and then I'll turn our smeltery to use solid fuel, this stuff, and that pretty much instant melts, or at least significantly, significantly increases the speed in which things melt. I don't know if that was a item that we need to craft in here. Oh, it looks like... Well, it looks like we have this. With a sterling engine, you can generate RF from the heat of the fluids in seared tanks well that's interesting i wonder if that's even worth making like if it's a significant amount of power or just you know 10 rf hmm well i would like to get ourselves a casting base and upgrade which i assume is going to be expensive so in order to make this we need a slot upgrade four plus four casting basins and four obsidian uh the slot upgrade four requires slot upgrade three which is manual and nuggets and some diamonds Okay, so upgrade three requires a two and night slime nuggets. So we're gonna have to make night slime before we can even make this. Uh, upgrade one is aluminum and iron. So the very first upgrade is chest, copper, and a base upgrade. And the base upgrade is paper, aluminum, 
and lapis. Well, I'll tell you guys what, I'm gonna start working on this. We need to figure out how to make night slime. I can't remember, I've made it before, it's just been so long. Let's look at the alloying. So we need iron plus liquid purple slime, which I don't think we have, but we might be able to find some islands around and then seared stone. So that's not that bad. Liquid purple slime. Is there a way for us to make this that I'm not aware of here? Looks like there isn't. Do we have purple slime? I remember us collecting slime balls at some point. I don't remember which color we have. Looks like we only have green. I guess we do have the red ones, but we need the purple ones. Yeah, again, let's re let's go to our mini map here. We've seen some slime islands around. I don't know if we've seen any purple slime islands. Is there a way to tell if they're purple just from looking at the map, I wonder? Okay. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to make as much of these parts as I can so we can try out our casting basins or smart IO things, and then we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, so I took some time here and I made myself a hang glider. Yeah, this is this is a updated version. It says that it has a durability on it, and yeah, we've been using a little bit of durability as we've been flying around. I did notice right here we do have a purple slime island. I didn't see that before, but now I see it. It is becoming nighttime, so we're going to have to worry about that a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and put a mark here. So if we do that, we put our cursor here. It says on the lower right-hand corner, Create waypoint at cursor B. So we'll call this uh, purple slime. All right, so we have a purple slime island over this way, and we are going to have to sleep again or <laughs> just wait out the night. I'll probably end up sleeping just for uh, speed's sake. Yeah, I don't have, like, forever to wait for on this stuff to happen. Okay. Yeah, the problem with the hang glider, uh, you can only go down. You can't fly with it. That'd be really good combined with the jetpack, but we don't have a jetpack yet. So until then, we're just going to be using the hang glider. Oh, I have a sleeping mat on me. I thought it was in my pouch for some reason. Uh, we can only sleep at night, so I guess we're not quite ready to sleep yet. The sun is going down. It says it is sunset, so maybe now? Nope, still won't allow us to sleep just yet. <laughs> okay, well, what is our difficulty at right now? It's impossible to see because all that text is... Covering it, I think it's 150. All right, so it's 150. We are going to sleep once again here. Okay, and now it's at 160. Yeah, that bumps us up like 10 every single time. Oh my goodness, pretty soon we'll be at max level. <laughs> I assume there's a max level. All right, so here is our purple slime island. Now, the only thing I'm kind of concerned about is if we pillar up there and there is a crazy slime. Where is it? Right there. Yeah, if we pull her up there and then there's some kind of a crazy slime that knocks us off, which I guess won't be that big of a deal since we have our boots, but it'll just be annoying trying to get back up there again. Okay, so I'll probably end up pillaring out a little bit further away and then we'll bridge over. I think it's how we're gonna do that. So let's kind of get over here for a moment. Yeah, I think that should be just fine. I don't think a slime will be able to jump over to me. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna pillar up there. Yep, nothing, nothing fancy. Just go ahead and pillar on up and hopefully we won't get knocked off and we will be able to get ourselves uh, some purple slime and maybe a purple slime sapling, which does in fact work with the bonsai, the hopping bonsai pots. All right, well, see you at the top. All right, guys, well, interestingly enough, it doesn't appear that there's any purple slime trees up here, but we do have the slimy sapling, so that'll be fine, or I guess the green slime trees. Uh, I think we'll just come down here and try and fight this guy. Uh, health is going to be pretty big. These guys have been dropping off the island. Oh my goodness, that one. That's definitely not one that I want to mess with. These guys have been dropping off the island and not dying as they hit the ground. Wow, okay, now we got one with particle effects. Can we kill these guys? We good? Okay, we're good. Uh, that one should have dropped some kind of armor. Oop, it's kind of hard to get out of this slime stuff. All right, so this is the stuff we're after here. Let's just vein mine the purple slime stuff away and we'll break one of these. Okay, very good. Uh, so we have 49 congealed purple slime. It's probably a little bit more that we can get. And then I definitely want to get some of these leaves here. Now, I can't remember, do they just naturally despawn? Do we just get rid of like the slime like that? Or do we have to break it? Well, looks like we got a slime sapling of some, whoa, dang, what was that sound? 
Huh, that was really loud. Uh, blue slime sapling. Yeah, we're not gonna get a purple one here, unfortunately. So I guess we have to find ourselves a purple tree. If we look at the map here... You know what? This is a green tree, and these have purple. Did they mess up the way that works now, or are the purple slime trees now supposed to spawn on other other platforms? I don't really know how that works. Huh. Anyway, uh, we will grab some of this. We could also use the purple slime juice that's down here uh, directly in the smeltery, so we don't have to melt down any slime balls if we wanted to. But I think we're going to be fine just like this. We're going to get rid of this and this one. Awesome. I think that's going to do us for right now. I will clean up my pillar because I hate leaving these pillars out here. And then I do want to try and see if we can get ourselves a purple sapling from over at this one. Yeah, that one's got the purple canopies on there. So we'll try that one next. Well, all that crafting is done. Uh, we now have two of these smart outputs available. So we've kind of seen this one and I did put in an upgrade four. So this will hold up to five items in its inventory before it'll start casting out anymore, which is, you know, a huge step up from the normal casting table that's from Tinkers. And then this one over here, I did put in our basin upgrade. So this one, I don't have the storage. We probably should get one in there, but for right now, this is good enough. Uh, so I kind of want to see what the difference is between these two. So molten iron, we have four blocks. So if we start pouring this one and then we start pouring this one, this one's going to fill all the way up and then I'll start its cooling process. But this one should continue to pour uh, until we get a full block. And there we go. See, it's already done. Oh, oh no. Did the game crash? Well, that was weird. The game crashed and then I was able to log back in and everything's fine. So... Not really sure how the test went, but you guys could see that when this thing filled up full of the stuff, it instantly converted into a solid block. We didn't have to wait for the whole hardening process. So that alone speeds up this thing significantly. But to speed it up even more is if we can get rid of these faucets and trade this for something that pours fluid like instantly, point A to point B kind of transfer. Uh, we'll have to look at getting something like that a little bit later in this mod pack, but guys, we're going to go and wrap the episode up here for today. I'm glad that that was just a simple crash the client bug and not something that I'd go in and like delete out or load a backup or something like that. That would have been really bad. But anyway, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching guys. Bye bye.